Well, welcome back, folks, to the big bypass surgery episode of this series. And uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. It's going to be quick. It's going to be easy, but it, it'll be pretty interesting. Now, here's the original schematic that shows the interstage uh, audio transformer. And as you can see here, the plate of this driver tube and the plate of this driver tube got its B+. Plus. They both come down. They came through this uh, primary coil and they got their bleed B plus voltage from this com incoming line right here which went over to this uh, uh, point right here on this on this filter cap and over here through the field coil and etc 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 okay now we no longer have this primary it's gone it's out of there but we still have to get B plus to this plate and B plus to that plate and at the same time, we still have to get a signal, a radio signal, that comes off those two plates. We have to get that radio signal into this secondary winding so it can come over here and activate these two output tubes, which will give us noise out of the speaker. Now, normally that was all done through the primary, but the primary is not there anymore. So we're going to have to bypass it and go straight into the secondary. Well, how do we do that? We need to be plus, we need a path for the audio. How do we do that? All right, it's very simple. Since the, you know, the primary of that audio transformer is no good, let's just disconnect it. All three leads, the center tap, top and bottom. It's not there anymore. It's there, but it's not there, if you know what I mean. All right, what we're gonna do, we still need to supply that B plus. We're gonna come off the same B plus line. We're gonna come over and that B plus line used to come down and go into the center here. Not anymore. The B plus line is going to go through a resistor up to the plate. Boom! Of that driver tube. And then it's going to keep on coming across. It's going to go up through another resistor. Both of these resistors are 15K. It's going to go through this resistor and come up here and go to that plate. Boom! There's our B plus for the two tubes. Anyway, now we have the uh, B plus voltage established for the tubes by tapping off of this line here, here and here. I know I'm going over this more than once, but it's important that you understand what's going on here. Now we just sit there and we wait until the radio signal comes into the control grid here on this driver and the control grid here. Once it does, the tubes kick into action and the radio signal comes out, comes down, comes down, comes down, goes through these two capacitors. One is the positive side, one is the uh, bottom half of the signal and they come down through here they used to go into this transformer primary but they don't now we bypass that sucker and shoot them straight into the control grid of the two output tubes one comes in here and the other or here yeah, here's the control grid here and the other one comes in at the control grid here all right not a problem you know now what is this uh what is it now incidentally this uh these two caps are coupling caps and they're also there to prevent DC uh, from getting down here. This is the audio section of the of the radio. We want we don't want any DC crap on the uh, control grids here. Okay, we want the AC nice as clean of an AC audio signal as we can get. Now, what is this mess right here? What do we do with this? I mean, there's still some stuff hooked up here. What's its purpose? Well, you know, the control grid of the audio output tubes has to have what they call uh, negative bias. In this case, uh, it says on the paperwork, I highlighted it over here somewhere, and of course I didn't have it out ready for this video. <laughs> anyway, trust me, on the paperwork it says the negative bias required for these two output tubes is minus 33 uh, volts DC on each control grid. Okay. Now that negative voltage is established by what's coming, let me see, it comes from uh, right here. It comes off the, the negative voltage side of the radio. Let me see if I can get this over here to show you what I'm talking about, in case you might have forgotten from before. Yeah, it would be coming from, uh, come on, baby, where are I? Here, 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 right here. It comes off of this thing right here, comes across, comes up up into and it becomes the center tap of this transformer secondary which provides the negative 33 volts on each control grid here now we have to keep that negative 33 volts there 
because you have to maintain the tube into what they call cutoff. Well, you know what? Brendan has taught me so much about tube cutoff and negative bias on the control grid that I'm almost to the point where I feel confident enough I could maybe do a video and explain that to the folks that don't understand this stuff. Because I'll tell you what, I didn't understand it for a long time. I still have one or two questions I'm going to ask Brendan about it. But anyway, moving along here, you have the negative voltage coming up, coming through the, the you know, the, the one half of the secondary, and it goes on to the control grid. There's your negative voltage there. It also comes up, comes across, and comes up here to the control grid here. So we have negative 33 volts, uh, uh, negative 33 volts bias voltage still established there. Now, like Brendan told me, he says, you know, we could just take this uh, secondary completely out of the circuit and just replace them with a 34 ohm resistor and a 38 ohm resistor and accomplish the same thing. Because right now, with the primary no longer connected, this thing is just acting as two resistors, which establishes that negative 33 volts bias voltage. Now see how easy that was? Piece of cake. He simply rerouted the B plus and tapped through a resistor up to the plate here and over here through another resistor, same value, up through to the plate up on this one. A new tap, a new point of supply. And then of course when the signal comes out, both tubes, they go through the coupling caps down straight into the grids of the output tubes. The output tube gets its negative bias voltage uh, still through the secondary and if the secondary craps out on us we're just going to replace them with resistors. I could do it right now but I'm not going to. I hope all that made a little bit of sense to you. Okay uh, now I've already gone ahead and uh, we're going to mount all this stuff on a terminal board and uh, I've already mounted the two resistors. I just tack soldered them on. The next, uh, the next segment uh, we'll show you where we're going to put it and how we're going to you know, solder up the two capacitors. But anyway, the two resistors are in there. We will not be grounding anything, so I'm going to cut off that center tab just so we don't make any mistakes, okay? Now let me see if there's anything else I need to cover. Let me think about it see if I can get back with you before we move on here. Oh yeah, I knew there was one more thing I wanted to cover. There's been some questions. Uh, if I bypass this uh, audio uh, transformer, won't I lose some gain uh, going into these tubes here? I mean, won't they, you know, see the purpose of this thing here, from what I understand, is to, you know, you, you go into a push-pull type of situation, you come down here, and this beefs up the signal, okay, sends it into the output tubes, which amplifies it even more, and then it goes into your audio output transformer. And if you lose this, won't you lose that little extra oomph you know, that, yeah, well, I, I would think so. I would think so. And according to Phil, our our uh, British buddy over there, you know, Steel City man, he said that, uh, you know, there may be a need to do a little tweaking and peaking and changing uh, earlier in the, in the entire radio to give us some of that oomph back. We'll discuss that with Brendan, see what we can work out if need be. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm all for just, just going with it and see what happens. The chance there's a chance it could be just fine, you know. We may not even detect any kind of loss and gain. What is gain? That means what it went in as and what it came out as. If it goes it goes out higher than what it came in, we got gain. And uh, if we lose that gain, and and it, the signal, you know, the volume and the signal, the strength of the signal is lowered to the point that the volume control cannot pick it up and the circuitry cannot pick it up as, as it sits, we might have to do something to you know beef it up as high as we can. I don't think we'll ever get it back to the original level it was with this out of here. But you never know. You never know. And uh, one more thing. I'll go over it one more time. According to Brendan now, uh, this, these two resistor values aren't that critical. I suppose you could use a 12 or whatever. And the value of the two coupling capacitors is also not that critical. You could probably use a, point, a 0 0.05. Okay? Up to a 0 0.1 if you wanted. It doesn't matter. Okay? All right, let's move on. All right, we, first we need to uh, do a little preparation here before we can mount that terminal strip in there with the resistors and the capacitors on them. We have to remove the wires from pin 3 on both tubes. We need to clean those pins off. There's one right there, and the other one is right there, okay? 
So this, this wire here will be removed from pin 3 of this tube. This wire here will be removed from pin 3 of that tube. And all three contacts, there's one there, one there, and one there of the primary of that interstage audio transformer will be removed. So let's get that done. We're going to kind of make things bare here. Well, it's the next day. And we need to get this terminal strip finished so we can get it screwed up into the chassis here. And uh, so we can hook it, you know, hook up the, uh, the capacitors to the, uh, the two driver tubes and get them down here hooked up to the, the two output tubes, the six F6s. We need to get all that done. But, for, you know, but first I wanted to cover something that popped up. You know, there's always something with these things. But I want to cover it for the guys that, you know, do not do this or just starting in it. That's the whole purpose of these videos. I keep repeating that over and over. You guys that know this stuff, it's going to bore you to death. Those of you who do not, it's going to interest you. Down here, if you'll recall, we took apart this wire, this wire, and this wire, which would be the left terminal, right terminal, and the center tap on this primary. But when I took uh, the, the center tap off, look what I got. I'm supposed to have one wire there, I mean, just one wire, but look what I got. I wound up with two wires hooked there. Now, the, you know, the guy who was just starting out of this stuff was saying, what the heck is this? Why are there two wires there? There's only supposed to be one. Well, here's the second wire right here, the one that goes up to the 32,000 resistor. They brought it down and just hooked it right to this terminal right here along with this other wire. Okay? So it's nothing to get excited about. No problem. They just they didn't want to splice into the wire here. You don't want to do that. So they just went ahead and connected it right there on the terminal with this other wire coming from the B plus line, okay? Nothing to it. This terminal strip will be mounted on the chassis in this in this like this. It'll be it'll go this way with the resistors facing us. And the B plus line is coming down from the top part of the chassis back here. It's coming from here and it will come down around and it will I'm, I plan to connect the B plus line to that very top eyelet you see there okay which would be this one right here all right and that that will be right here to the one side of this resistor this 15k resistor right there one side of that resistor and then from that point there's a wire that goes over to the other side, to the bottom of this resistor. So this point right here where the B plus comes in and this point right here on the other 15K resistor are connected together. And I'm, I've done that already. I haven't soldered it up yet. I've done it utilizing a jumper wire to the two outside pins. The two outside pins being, you know, the, the, uh, the B plus will come in here and then it will... Uh, provide B plus on this end and I got it jumpered over and it'll provide B plus on this end. That leaves me my two center terminals here free for wire connections and capacitor hookups. Okay? That was the quickest and easiest way I could think of to do it. So right now what I'm going to do is go ahead and solder this in. I only have these resistors tack soldered if you'll recall. Let me go ahead and get that whole thing soldered up nice and secure. The terminal strip is now mounted into the chassis. We've got our jumper wire uh, all soldered in nice and snug as a bug in a rug between the two outside connections on the two resistors. And I've colored in in green here everything that we've hooked up so far. And I do not have the B plus hooked up yet. I don't have this wire nor the B plus wire connected yet. The next two wires we're going to put in will go from the top of the resistors one will go up to pin 3 on this driver tube. The other one will go from the top of the resistor or the opposite side of the resistors that we've already connected. We're going to run that up to pin 3 of this driver tube. And I've already cut the wires. These are the two wires that are going to connect those for us. So let's get those soldered up. The two wires are now soldered to pin 3 on this driver tube and pin 3 on this driver tube and run up to the two inside terminals here where the inside of the resistors are. I have not soldered them here yet though. They still need to be soldered. This one here is 
Got to get out of the way there. That's our B plus line or one of our lines. Anyway, I haven't soldered them there yet because I still have to put capacitors there. I want to hook one there and one there. Once I get the capacitor ends connected, then I'll go ahead and solder them. And as you can see, we have added this green line showing it is complete. And we have added this green line showing it's complete. Now we just need to hook our capacitors to those two other ends of the resistors, like I said, and take them down and connect them to, to the two outside terminals on the secondary of the audio transformer. Those two secondaries will be this one right here and this one right here. This outside terminal and this one here. The 0.1 microfarad capacitors are now in and soldered and everything is soldered up on this terminal strip now. And one is soldered to one side of that uh, secondary on that audio transformer and the other one is soldered to the other side of the secondary, okay? And once again, I soldered them in so you can read the writing. You, anytime you put a capacitor in, always put it to where the writing is out, where you can see what value it is, what voltage it is. Do not turn them around to where the writing faces the chassis. You can't see anything that way, okay? All right, I, all we have left to do is hook up the B-plus line to this outer uh, terminal right here, and we will be done. And of course, I've gone ahead and taken the green wire, the green pin, you know, the green felt tip pin, and I marked this capacitor in, and I have marked this capacitor in. And that's it. Take a look at the whole shebang, the whole shooting match here. Let's see if I can get this paper to stay up, that is. There it is, all the green. Everything's hooked, everything's hooked, everything's hooked, except for the B, plus, which is not green yet. Let's get that hooked up. Well, that's it, folks. We have installed the two B plus lines the one coming from B plus and the other one that runs up to the uh, plate of the phase inverter right here. And I've colored them in green already, so everything is now good to go. We have the entire thing set up. And when you're all done, you know, to make sure as you go along now, get those get those solder joints clean. Don't let those things get all funky looking and everything, okay? And I also went ahead and put some heat shrink on this end here, just in case that it rubbed against anything, which would be down in here, up in here. I, I don't know, you know. I just wanted to be on the safe side putting the, the heat shrink on. All right, one more thing to talk to you about. Last but not least, I want to cover why Brendan selected 15K for these two resistors. Why not 10K? Why not 20? Why not 50K? You know, whenever I was kind of learning this stuff, I always used to see people do things like this. And I said, well, how come they, how did they come up with that figure? How did, now, this, now, the capacitors are no big deal. They're just there to, you know, transfer a signal and block DC, you know, down to the grids of the two output tubes. No big deal. We could have pretty much used just about any value we wanted. But these, this 15K business, you know, how did he determine that? Well, it was all based on B+, which we really didn't know the actual B+. If you go over here on the tube socket, voltage reading uh, drawings and everything, you'll find that the highest voltage listed is 315. Now, 235 was on the driver plates for each one, but 315 was the highest one on all the tubes. So, we're, you know, we Brendan went with that. He went with 315 volts DC as the B plus, which is fine. So then he began to plug in, you know, different values. Now, we already know in the beginning of this series, we found out early on that the current draw was 9 milliamps. So that helps. So let's take 9 milliamps. And find out, let's find out what the voltage drop is going to be across this resistor going up to these two plates, okay? Based on a B-plus voltage of 315 volts. And we'll, we'll subtract the two and find out, you know, how, what's going to be our, our new voltage. We no longer need the 235. The, the uh, transformer's not there. The transformer would pull it down, you know. With increased current flow, voltages go down, in, you know, in a tube on the plate and all that. Well, the load's no longer there, the current draw's no longer there, 
and because we're just you know feeding a signal straight into here and trying to establish some B plus voltage that'll enable the tubes to work. And remember now, initially these things had 235 volts on each plate. Let's find out what we have right now based on the 15,000 ohm resistors uh, connected to a B plus of 315 volts. All right, let's take nine milliamps, which would be uh, let me see, it's hard to see out of this camera. Okay, here we go. We got point zero zero nine. We're going to multiply that times fifteen thousand. One. That's that's the uh, that's the resistor. We know that we have nine milliamps of use through this radio times the resistor. That gives us a hundred and thirty-five volts. 135 volts. Now we're going to take, we're going to clear that, we're going to put in the 315 volts. 3, 1, 5, we're going to take away 135 volts. And that's going to give us 180 volts. 180 volts. So we no longer have 235 volts on the plates. We now have 180 volts or thereabouts, you know, it could vary either way because, you know, we weren't 100% sure that the B plus was 315 and because we haven't fired the radio back up yet to find out. Anyway, we've got 180 volts on each plate. Now, you can vary that plate voltage by changing the values of the resistors. As you, you know, it would be 9 milliamps, <coughs> 9 milliamps times, what, 12, 9 milliamps times... 10 or you know whatever okay so that's how 15k became the value for these two resistors it was just basically started out as kind of a swag you know an SWAG those of you who've been in the military know what a swag is <laughs> anyway 180 volts on the plates of the two driver tubes uh, that's, that's kind of a, like Brendan said, it's kind of a nice, comfortable spot for it to be. But keep in mind, we can adjust it either way, okay? And that's it, people. It's all put together now. All we have to do is stick in another 6J5 tube in there, put the rest of the tubes in, give it some power, and fire this baby back up. See if it works now that we've done this. And we're going to do that in the next video. Until then, I appreciate everybody being here. This is John.